Hi guys, I'm so excited because this is my first ever teaching video. It's about 2 in the night but I'm still shooting it. Okay, so we'll obviously be starting with the first chapter of NCRT that is Living World. And uh, it's a pretty vague chapter though but still every part of NCRT is important. And I will be covering this chapter in two phases. The first one will include the definition of living, nomenclature and introduction to taxonomy and the second phase will include the rest of the chapter. So let's get going. Now before starting every unit, I would like you guys to notice the name of this scientist given in your NCRT and this is very important because sometimes they may ask it in normal exams but it's very important for need so the scientist given in the starting of this unit is Ernst Mayer and what you have to remember about him is that he was also called the Darwin of the 20th century all right now okay, let's start with the chapter and the first question anybody would ask you when they start this chapter is how would you define living now you might say anything that grows breathes and responds to the atmosphere or something like that but we'll have to make sure of a thing here that characteristics of a living organism and defining characters of a living organisms are completely different now and one thing very important in growth which people usually ask is what are the two twin characteristics of growth and we can say that increase in mass an increase in number of individuals are the two twin characteristics of growth. When I talk about unicellular organisms, let's consider amoeba. So you know amoeba divides into two organisms by binary fission. You've learned this in 10th grade, right? Now it's dividing, but binary fission is actually a method of reproduction. And what we've learned that growth indicates increase in number of individuals. So that means that in unicellular organisms, growth and reproduction are basically the same. But when you consider multicellular organisms, growth and reproduction are completely exclusive events. Now there is one thing you'll have to remember and this factor is very important for us to notice that growth is not a defining characteristic for a living organism. Okay, that is if you see a random non-living organism so just consider a mountain you know that a mountain can grow due to deposits of soil and other particles on it so does it become living no right so that way we can't exactly define growth as a important characteristic of a living organism but uh, you can't deny the fact that most of the living organisms exhibit the property of growth. now coming to the second characteristic of growth that is reproduction and we all basically know reproduction very well. We know that uh, hydra and yeast divide by budding. We know that amoeba undergoes binary fission. We know that planaria undergoes fragmentation. We learn about it later in classes, but these are the few examples you'll have to remember. They're from NCRT. Remember, okay. we learned that reproduction and growth are not mutually exclusive events in unicellular organisms. In that way, we can't really differentiate between these two processes in uh, such organisms. So this is one factor which kind of makes reproduction not exactly a definable characteristic for growth. And the second factor we should consider is, you know, there are certain organisms, for example, mules. So mule is a hybrid of a female horse and a male donkey. This hybrid is a sterile organism, that is, it can't reproduce. But you just can't say that mule is a non-living organism just because it can't reproduce, right? And if, even if you consider sterile bees, worker bees are sterile. Infertile couples in uh, human beings, they are also sterile. That doesn't mean that they're not living. So these factors prove that reproduction is again not a very essential characteristic for come to the most important characteristic of a living organism and this one is a defining characteristic that means that every single li living organism irrespective of its size and its composition exhibits this property that is metabolism now we're all made up of chemicals right uh, we're made up of cells and cells are made up of atoms 
and these chemicals undergo reactions they combine with each other they interact with each other and the sum total of all these chemical reactions in our body is called metabolism sometimes these reactions can be isolated and performed outside our body and such reactions are not exactly metabolic reactions but you can call them as living reactions and this term living reaction is very important it has been asked for several competitive exams so again this proves that metabolism can be defined as a, a definite character for a living organism we come to the second characteristic that is very important for a living organism or which can be called as the defining character that is consciousness now we all know that we respond to stimuli uh, if you put a plant outside you know that it will turn towards the sun you know this is called as phototropism when you try to touch a touch me not plant its leaves fold back so this is also a kind of stimuli which you are giving and the plant is responding to the stimuli we also respond to stimuli similarly all living organisms in this world are that conscious means that all living organisms are aware of their surroundings they're conscious and this is a defining characteristic of a living organism so we're done with the first agenda for today the second one is diversity and nomenclature the earth is so diverse you can find millions of species on the earth and to be precise according to the present estimates there are about 1.7 to 1.8 million species on the earth and the combined diversity at all stages of uh, ecosystem is known as biodiversity there's so many species it's important to name them and since you already know that the world is not only diverse in its species but also in its languages and cultures its name might vary from each language which becomes confusing for uh, most of the biologists and for people in general to deal with so hence people had to come up with a system of naming these organisms and this system is known as nomenclature and basically to reach the step of nomenclature you need several processes which begin with characterization that is defining the character of the organism second is identification as we talked about the third one is classification followed by nomenclature now in order to facilitate such naming there were several scientists from around the world who agreed on some procedures and some criteria to name organisms and uh, plant names were given by international code for by botanical nomenclature and animal names by international code of zoological nomenclature these are very important so please do remember them now uh, the principles of nomenclature this is very very important and nom nomenclature was given by the scientist carolus linnaeus okay this name is very important so please remember what he said is that each scientific name had two components that is the generic name or generic epithet and the species name or specific epithet okay and there were several uh, rules as to how this name has to be written and there were four rules which are very important very important question for uh, your theory based exam you'll be asked what the four rules are and i'm going to tell you come to the four rules the first one is that the biological name is derived from latin and now you might ask why latin that's because latin is a dead language that is there is no more changes that are being made to that language now second thing is that the first name is the genus of the organism and the second name is the species of the organism and mangifera indica is basically mango and it's the specific kind of mango okay and the third rule very important rule is that both the words in biological name and when they're handwritten they're separately underlined and when they're printed they're printed in italics and now the fourth one is that the generic name sta should start with a capital letter but sorry there's a mistake the specific name should always start with a small letter okay sometimes the name of the author or the scientist also appears after the name of the species like for example linnaeus so mangifera indica 
dot lin okay it can also be written that way now let's come to an important part that is classification i told you it's a part of nomenclature so okay if i ask you to imagine characteristics of a mammal you'd probably say presence of mammary glands or external ear or you know there are several characteristics for mammal presence of so hair what i'm trying to say is when you take certain characteristics and based on that you place different animals in different groups these groups are known as no, taxa. taxa is any category all the plants could be included under one taxa or simply just the plant wheat could be one taxa because it includes several other strains of wheat now this classification of organisms based on different characteristics into groups called taxa is known as taxonomy and one very important question from this part is what is the basis of taxonomy and there is a line in ncrt which is very important i would like you all to note taxonomy is based on internal and external structure along with cell cell development and the ecological information of that particular organism definitions i would like to give you a tip never ever try to mug it up or remember it as a definition okay so always try to make sense of each and every word and you will get it trust me you'll get it so when you break up this definition classification what would you classify organisms on the basis of their structure structure can be of two types external and internal um now the most basic part of an organism is a cell so cell development and an organism is also defined by its surroundings its ecological function so also its ecological information so when you divide when you divide the definition into different parts and make sense out of it it's easier to remember classifying organisms is something different but human beings were also interested in knowing the interaction between these organisms and this system of study about the interaction of organisms is known as systematics systematics is derived from a latin word called systema which means systematic arrangement of organisms and there is a very famous book by carolus linnaeus known as systema naturae this is a very important mcq and sometimes asked as a one marker in your theory we talk about uh systematics it includes the interaction between organisms and the very basis of evolution is the interaction between different organisms throughout the geological period of time so basically systematics is also known as the basis for evolutionary rela- relationships this is a very important point and okay i think we're pretty much done with the chapter this was my first teaching experience and i'm telling you i was pretty nervous please let me know if i can improve somewhere and also let me know if you want the classes in hindi because i've seen that people usually prefer it in hindi i'm completely cool with it also please 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 do share it with all your friends and subscribe and like if you like my content i will be coming up with the second part of this video very soon i think in the next two days so i'll keep you guys posted thank you